Welcome to the Daily Smith Figures for the Devotional Review, presented as a podcast by myself, Victoria Iyok. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. If you are a recurring guest, thank you. And if you are a very first time guest, thank you too. God bless you. And without further ado, let us start with prayer. Father Lord, God Almighty, King of Glory, Lord of Lords, we thank you because you are teaching us about faith. Help us to live by faith. Because this is what you've called us to do in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So these days we've been talking about faith and today again we are talking about faith as today's and today again we're talking about faith as today's message is entitled Victory True Faith. Victory True Faith. We are going directly in scriptures, Luke chapter 17 verse 5 and Luke chapter 18 verse 1 to 14. Luke chapter 17 verse 5 in the New International Version says this, The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And Luke chapter 18 verse 1 to 14 in the New King James Version starts. Then he spoke a parable to them that men out that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my, from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, truth, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on it? Also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we've already been talking about faith. Faith is taking God at his word. Faith is the living principle of the word of God. Faith produces life. It changes lives. We have to live by faith. We have to walk by faith. All the wonderful things that Jesus did were done so that people might be changed and may be made like him. We have been trans- We have been called to be this, his disciples. His disciples like to walk after, to walk in his own footsteps. The Bible says that as he is, so we are in this world. So we are called to live like him, to be like him, to think like him, to act like him, to plan like him. That's why he transformed us and gave us his Holy Spirit to direct our steps. We are children of God and we have to feed on the word of God because how will faith come if we do not feed on the word of God? There are some Christians who believe that they can go like their whole lives reading the word of God from time to time, once every Sunday, once every month, once in a blue moon. No, just as you have to drink water every day, you have to 
feed on God's word every single day. When you see that God gave the manna to his people, the children of Israel, when they were in the desert, it was manna for every day. That's the way you need to receive God's word. Every single day, there are scriptures that you have to read. You may not read like... um the same number of verses every day, but you have to make it consistent. I'm reading my Bible every day because that's how you feed on the world. And we already said a few days ago that when we read the world, we should read it out loud to ourselves because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we should be reading the word of God so that we hear it as we are reading it out loud to ourselves. The Lord dwells in a humble and contrite heart and makes his way into the dry places. So if you open up to him, he will flood you with his life. You can never clean sin, as Smith Wiggins Watt says. You can never clean sin. You can never purify sin. You can never be strong if you are in sin. You will never have vision while you are in sin. Revelation stops when sin comes in. The human spirit must come to an end, but the spirit of Christ must be alive and active. What do we mean? by all this when we say that you must die to the human spirit and then god will quicken your mortal body and make it alive what does the bible what does the bible say what does the bible mean when it says that without holiness no man will see god in, as said in hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 it is clear that like you see all these miracles that jesus did we, if we want to walk in the miraculous we have to li- live and walk by faith this is already the clear thing but as we said yesterday, you cannot be in faith when you are living on, in an unholy life, in an unjust life, because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. If you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you've been justified, you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, so you're supposed to live by faith. You're supposed to live by faith. And we explained already that when you are living a sinful life, an unholy life, like you're trying to have the best of both worlds, the best of the Christian world and the best of the sinful world, when you're trying to have the best of the two and that you're living and playing and toying with sin intentionally, you know what happens? You are not able to live in the faith in which you're supposed to live. Why? Because first of all, faith is believing God. When you will want to pray, you will not believe that God will want to bless you this way that God will want to heal the sick through your same hands that you used to sin, that God will want to cleanse you and, and, and set you free while you are living in sin. You know, it's very, very, very difficult for you to believe at that moment. It's not that God does not want to bless you. It's that you, you are not in a position to receive the blessing because you are living in sin. He said, I put before you life and death. Choose life so that you will live. But when you are choosing sin, you are choosing death and at that moment, it's not God's fault if you're choosing that. It is your choice. Some people try to push the blame on God for everything, but he gave you free will. You get to choose. Now, on the issue of sin, because the word of God says that we have to follow peace without men and purification, holiness, purity, sanctification, without which no man will see the Lord. If you want to be strong in faith, you have to get out of sin. You have to get out of sin because so long as you are in this habitual sin, you will keep, it will be so hard for you to be believing God. It's not that God's power is limited, but it's you who is not able to tap into that power because you are, it's hard for you to walk in faith when you are walking in sin at the same time. So what can you do? You cannot clean sin on your own. You cannot purify it on your own. You need the blood of Jesus to cleanse you. You need to confess the sin to God because the word of God says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. So your job is you confess the sin as soon as you realize that you've committed it or as soon as the Holy Spirit puts it in your mind and convicts you and tells you because the Holy Spirit will convict you while the devil will condemn you. The Holy Spirit will tell you this thing you did was wrong. Confess it to God. Repent. Re- repentance means change. Okay. The Hebrew word for repentance Repentance goes with change. So you change direction, you change perspective, you change attitude. The Holy Spirit will tell you, change this. Okay, confess it to God and change this. Okay, while the spirit of condemnation, the spirit of the devil will tell you, you sin, there's no way you're going to be saved. It's over for you. You better commit suicide. You better die. It's over for you. So make sure that you know the difference between the spirit of conviction, which is the Holy Spirit, and the spirit of condemnation, which comes from the devil. So when God convicts you, when God convicts you, when he tells you that you did this, it was wrong. You come to him and you confess it to him. And what do you do afterwards? Because there are Christians who live in the same sin again and again, and they just can't help it. They just don't know how to be free from it. And I know this feeling. Why do I know this feeling? Because I have been in those churches where they tell you that you're going to be, that if you have a habitual sin, know that you're going to be in that same sin for your whole life, that uh, 
sometimes God sets people free from this type of sin, sometimes not, that perhaps it will be for your whole life. So just accept that this is your, your thorn in the flesh. First of all, Paul's thorn in the flesh was not sickness and disease. He never said it was that. And Paul's thorn in the flesh was not sin. He never said it was that. So let us stop lying to ourselves, okay? Let us stop lying to ourselves. That's the first step. Now, next thing to know is that God, Jesus did not die for nothing. He said in his word, you have to study the book of Romans, especially chapter 6, 7, and 8. But Jesus clearly, it, he made it clear in his word that he came to destroy the works of the devil, that he came to set you free from sin. He came to take away the sins of the world, not to leave you in your sins, but to take away the sins, okay? Which means that you have been set free from sin. And this is written black and white in your Bibles, that you have been set free from sin that you have been set free from sin and you are now a slave to righteousness. You are no more a slave to sin. What does all this mean? What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that those churches, those people, those books, which told you that if you are addicted to a certain sin, it will be for you all your life. Those are lies. First of all, it's not God's plan for you. It's not that God is making you sin to teach you something. That's completely wrong theology. Those are lies, complete lies. When you see something like that, if you can even tear the page, just tear it down. It is a lie. It is not the truth, okay? God is not the one making you fall in the same sin time and again. God is not the one. He knows that it's limiting your faith. Why would he do that to you? And God is holy. He does not tempt you. It is We've already laid the foundation as God's word says that God does not tempt you to sin. He's not like that. This is not his nature, okay? We've already, if you've not heard that message, listen to the previous messages and you're gonna hear it so the basis here is that god does not want you to be in a habitual sin jesus died to set you free from sin so what is the main point here you are a christian so if you're listening to this you're probably a christian if you're not you can give your life to jesus christ ask him to be your lord and savior surrender to him and choose to live your life according to his word and start reading his word every day and obeying it but if you're listening to this you're probably already a christian if you're a christian let me tell you what the bible says about you you have authority over the devil. You have authority over the devil. You have authority over demons. You have authority over over sickness and disease. It means that right where you are right now, whatever the habitual sin, you stand. It is a battle between you and that spirit or those spirits. It's a battle. So long as they believe, so long as they know that you believe that they can keep you in bondage all your life, they're gonna keep you in bondage all their life. But there's got a time where you have to stand up and say, I've been set free from sin in the name of Jesus Christ, and you spirit of you can list it spirit of jealousy, spirit of hypocrisy, spirit of theft, spirit of lust, spirit of whatever the sin, spirit of alcoholism, whatever the sin, you just speak to that to that thing and you say this stops in the name of Jesus. Let it be the last time you speak to that thing. And at first it will try to resist you. Because it doesn't yet know that you have this zeal. It will try to resist you and see if you give up. If you give up, it's going to stay. Or if you resist for a time, it will go. As the Lord said that when you cast out evil spirits, they go for some time. And they find when they see that they don't find a better place, they find more evil spirits and they come back. That's why at times you have the impression that, wait, we prayed for these people. His condition seemed fine. Or you have the impression that you prayed for yourself. It looked fine. And then afterwards it came back and it came worse. It's because the demon spirits went and when they came back, they saw that you had not cleansed your house properly. You had not made it inhabitable. You had not made it such a way that it would be impossible for them to come back in your life. Okay. Inhospitable. So this is what you have to do. You have to make it clear to those spirits and to yourself that it's a battle and that if someone has to lose, it's them. You have to decide that this thing, I'm not staying with it in my life forever. I'm getting out of sin in Jesus Christ's name. And you fight it. You command it to live. Every time it tries to come back, whether in your dreams, whether in your thoughts, even when the thought comes, you say, hey, no, in the name of Jesus Christ, stop that. You fight it. You bring into cap You bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ because the weapons of our welfare are not canal, but are mighty through God to pull down strongholds, cast down arguments, and a heavy fighting that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ, and being ready to punish, to punish all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. This one is Second Corinthians chapter ten, verses four to six. So you make up your mind that this is a war. This is a war that you are wrestling with this thing and that you are going to win because the Bible says that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves us. You decide that it's your battle that you fight and that you win and you get aggressive, you get resilient. If you have to shout, shout. If you have to scream, scream. Though it's not a shouting that casts the spirit away, but it is. If you need to shout to get to a point where you know that you are really serious, do it. 
you understand but fight your battle fight your good fight and get free from sin because this freedom you know this freedom is going to help you even in your faith you're going to believe god better when you know that really that you are doing what he said you should be doing because he said if you love me you will keep my commandments if you're not keeping his commandments of course you'll be doubting yourself do i really love jesus do I? and you know that you do not really love him because he said that if you love me you will keep my commandments so every time that i fail that i mess up i have to know that there's a problem with the level to which i love god and i have to level up after he set the standard he's not i'm not the one setting the standards he set the standards and i level up to the level of the standards so that's what i'm supposed to do if he said that if you love me you will keep my commandments i don't get to choose which commandments i keep i have to keep all of them and that's why I, I, I thank god for the presence of the holy spirit because he keeps us accountable he reminds us this is what the world says so that i can confess i can repent i can change because he made me able to do so so you are free you have been set free from sin in the name of Jesus Christ to so right now decide that this thing I'm warring against you and I'm saying this stops in the name of Jesus Christ. Do not accept to stay in bondage any longer because God, God is willing and able to help you through this battle and he's already paid the price for your freedom. So you are free. You just don't know it yet and you just don't stand for it yet. So I'll end with this quote by Smith because what? A little bit of sin will spoil a whole life. A little bit of sin will spoil a whole life. Let us pray. Father God, God, Almighty King of Glory. Um, I thank you because the word of Jesus Christ has set me free. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has set me free from sin. I thank you because the Lord Jesus Christ has set me free from sin. Please just repeat as I'm speaking it. Say it as right where you are and mention the sin in question and say I am free in the name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord God Almighty, I thank you because the Lord Jesus Christ has set me free from sin. He's translated me from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. He has paid the price. I am free from sin. I believe and I stand firm in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for listening and God bless you. If you need help, if you need prayer, don't forget to contact me on my different social media platforms, especially Instagram. I'm on Instagram under the name Victoria Eok. And thank you so much. God bless you. Bye bye. And I hope you'll be together tomorrow um, by God's grace. God bless you. Bye bye.